Uh, so hello, my name is Gravenigov Roman, and I'm currently working for a company called Findify, and most probably you've never heard about that, um, and mostly because it's uh, not a B2C company, so it's focused on the, um, it's a white label e-commerce SaaS search buzzword bingo thing. Uh, when we, um, we are doing search for different stores, for about 1.5 thousand stores in uh, absolutely different areas. It's, we're serving about 20 million products. And when you go for any of our merchants working with us, you will never even notice that they're using some external search solution because it looks organic. And uh, we have quite a lot of customers hitting our search API per month. But we're still a small company. Uh, and a long time ago, like when Findify was founded, um, uh, it was mostly an add-on for a Shopify platform, mostly focused on the UI improvement of the search. And um, it, uh, un under the hood, it, used still st it was using Elasticsearch. As far as I know, Shopify also uses Elasticsearch, so the product ranking was almost the same as on Shopify, but with a modern UI and so on, and responsive on mobile. But actually, when you start thinking about the value you provide to your customers and the clients, the, the shoppers going to the stores are not going for a nice UI. They want to buy a product at the end. And uh, if you can help uh, customers sell more, uh, you will provide more value, and if you are a startup, it's very important. It, what, it will make you not to die in a year. Um, and we understood that maybe ranking is really important there uh, to provide a value. And uh, the first step in any data science journey is like step one is uh, eyeballing at your data. So we started staring at the data and found that actually most of the clicks uh, of our, our, our merchants are happening within the top five products. So it's like actually first row of the products. And no one is scrolling down because everyone is lazy and everyone got used and spoiled by Google that uh, you have uh, absolutely perfect ranked products or items at the first time, and you don't need to go over the second page. Second page does not exist. Um, the second problem that uh, you might guess that there will be other searches for customers. And if you're focusing on small and medium-sized businesses, not like a giants like Amazon, uh, usually people are not spending that much time on, on the store, so they come, landing from some uh, advertisement campaign, do like one search, maybe two searches. And if you, was not, you were not able to provide a reliable, a cool ranking for them, which is useful, they will just leave forever. And you, but we also checked that, w will they come back? N most probably no. And this is very important, so if you see a typical uh, typical customer session for uh, a small and medium-sized e-commerce store. So it looks like this. So it's customer arriving on a landing page. It's uh, he or she clicks on some p product collections, maybe doing some search. And if uh, he or she was not able to find something, he will just leave forever. And you have a very small time window that you know something about this customer. So he, when he arrived, you know about, uh, about his platform, or if you started clicking on the products, you might guess his uh, gender or his interests and sizes, colors. And you can s uh, use this data and leverage this data while he makes a search, but you still have a very narrow window to improve and rank your products according to the past customer behavior, because the customer behavior is Sex happened like 10 seconds ago. It's not the case like it happens with the music recommendation services that you can rerun your whole model once a day and provide a better ranking tomorrow because on a small businesses, there is no tomorrow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and we started thinking, why do we rank products based on a text, like text matching with a query uh, customer entered and the, uh, the title and the product description? So the maybe we're sitting on a, like a pile of different data, metadata about the products, prices, the customer behavior, and some insights provided by, custom by merchants, and you can leverage that, but you're not doing it. And we were like, why don't we just use some sort of a rule engine or introduce some knowledge about the ranking in our scoring. So it's like the script scoring in Elasticsearch, let's plug there some product popularity, with, which is not just a number, it depends on the number of purchases and, and uh, page use, and the popularity within the current query, like uh, it was uh, proposed uh, multiple times in different uh, talks. And, but the, the we got like a really nice improvement on that, and uh, I will show you later a bit the improvement, but it looks like a linear regression to me, 
And after we did it with a linear regression, we immediately added AI and machine learning to our product sales pitch. Um, <laughs> Uh, but actually, if you start thinking about that, so we are, you're not the first who started uh, dealing with the... Ah, so as for the results, if you take the Elasticsearch, like text like BM25 uh, relevance and compare it to this one with the linear regression with our case. So we got like inver uh, nice improvement in conversion and average value, but it's very specific numbers to over the small and medium sized businesses and uh, average of the very huge number, like 1000 customers are he sitting b behind this number. So it might be completely different for your business. Um, but uh, we were like reinventing the wheel because there is a lot of uh, research happening in this area and Google is not using linear regression to rank results uh, for obvious reasons and uh, there is a huge area of research happening called learn to rank and there are plenty of algorithms uh, widely developed and used and uh, like if you check all these contests related to the uh, search ranking you might notice that like there are a couple of algorithms with a similar behavior but the cool thing about lambda mart uh, which is um, i guess one of the most popular ones there there's a plenty of different implementa open source implementations that you can use directly without struggling to implement your own algorithm Sorry. So, uh, but the problem, if you go this way to integrate the learn to rank into Elasticsearch in 2016, is actually Elasticsearch itself, uh, because it, you will start more struggling and fighting against Elasticsearch, and it won't help you to solve your problem. So we decided to go with the uh, this last talk, so I decided to add some funny pictures. Uh, so we decided to go with a, like a two-phase. Uh, if you want to make a photo, you can again. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, we decided to go with a two-tire, uh, two-phase uh, ranking uh, algorithm. So you get a search request, which is get some intermediate ranking from Elasticsearch from top one or top 500 products, and then it's re-ranked with a special microservice which listens for all the events coming from the customers. And uh, as we are having a lot of customer behavior data, like click-through data, the purchase data, we can also use it because there is not a lot of knowledge encoded there. The knowledge by the customers, not by your domain experts, because they might be wrong sometimes, but the customers are also can be wrong, but they are more probable that they're right. And uh, we can go with a model per merchant because we have a wide variety of merchants, not a single store, but thousands of them. And they are very diverse. They can sell anything like toy cars to real cars or to dog food. And the behavior is different. And uh, we can optimize for search relevancy in hoping that it will improve the business metrics. And actually, we were partially wrong with all these three approaches. And I will tell you a couple of cool stories about why it happened. So. To train the model, to train the data, you, we decided to have uh, multiple feature groups so that we can use for the training. Like this the scope for search, like number of terms, for example, and number of filters enabled in the search, how search is popular, is like a popular search or not. L for the product, it can be the product price or number of page use. It also can be counted, but not only on a point in time, but for different time windows. The same for variant, the customer session, and uh, some scoped uh, counters like number of page use within the current category page or within the current query. So it's actually maybe 60 or, uh, 60 or 70 different features used for that. And finally, we understood that we're not using linear regression anymore, so we can truly say that it's some sort of a machine learning. And But when we enabled it for in a production of a couple of merchants and started uh, eyeballing uh, the A-B test results, they were positive, but not that. And if you see all the business metrics, you can swap conversion with anything. It's just some my uh, ugly drawing. So it becomes better at the beginning and then slowly degrades. The number it degrades to is still better than before, so you can tell your customer that, whoa, learn to rank works. But for yourself, you think that something is happening there and you don't understand why, why the model degrades and it happens all over the different merchants and without any no proper explanation. So for the like business results, it's, it was at the end, it's plus six to the baseline, but it was a maximum plus eight, which is you start wondering why it is degrading. And um, 
So the most interesting thing here is that using raw click-through data for the training, uh, because like imagine that you have an original ranking for the products A, B, C, D, and you receive some interaction with the product B, like customer clicked on the product B. You use it for a training, and somehow in the same context, model will emit different ranking, like knowing that B is maybe more relevant in this particular case, then customer interacts with C, and uh, it's again, again fed into the model to uh, get the better ranking. But the problem here is that um, you're using the data you emitted, you created, to train the model. So it starts like eating itself in a loop, and uh, it starts, uh, it's, it's, ha it's happening because of the position bias. There are a, lot, a lot of different biases in the search as well as like position bias, model bias, for like, like I described, the presentation bias. And uh, it can degrade the model significantly. Like, at least it happened with us. It depends on the data set, but it might not happen with you. But I've seen a lot of references to this problem in different scientific articles regarding this position bias, even from Yahoo and Google. And uh, we decided to have a, like, a, to prove that uh, position bias exists, we decided to have an A-B test. Like, we fed a very small segment of customers with random ranking and checked the click, click uh, histogram. And it doesn't really matter. You can feed random products to customers and they will still be clicking on the first products, which is like <laughs> 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 because they got used that the research is relevant and the most relevant product is the first, why should I scroll? But actually, yes, it affects the business metrics because most probably they won't be able to find that what they are looking for. But at the end, the click uh, probability is the same for the, uh, as with a normal uh, search. So the position bias is not the first thing, and we're not the first one who uh, uh, explored it, and there are multiple ways of getting rid of it, but, but uh, we used my, maybe the simplest solution for that. So we split our traffic into different uh, tires, and there was there's exploration and exploitation segment. On the exploration segment, we try to understand what is really important for the customers, and then leverage this data on the major part of the traffic in this exploitation segment. And it will allow you to unbias the training data, but you, in an exploration segment, you need to mess with the data somehow that you will understand what was really important above the position. So maybe it's a product popularity, maybe it's something, something else, but you don't know. And the simplest way to make this exploration segment is just take a one or less percent of our traffic. It depends usually on the amount of money merchants pay to us. The more money, the less the segment. And uh, the first page is shuffled. So the, for the same context, for the same search query, different customers will receive, receive different rankings. And they are actually shuffled there. So they are still relevant. So it's still first page, but in a random order. And at the end, on average, for this particular query, you can understand what was really important for customers to, to, to yield to, be to more clicks. And it doesn't really matter of the position, because every time the position is random. And uh, this segment is used for training. And um, it allowed us to stop the model from degrading at the end. But it's not only the f only problem with the approach we took. Because like, if you train a model per merchant, and you have a lot of different stores, and the stores are for f from different sizes, there are some merchants with low traffic. And for example, we have a merchant selling elite sofas. Each sofa costs like 5,000 euro. They have one, a couple of hundreds of purchases per month, and they have double-digit conversion. So they have a couple of 10, 20 visitors per day, but they do millions on that. And that's the problem. So if you start to, you, to collect click-through click data to train your model, it will take you a couple of months to finally provide some result, but it's better to spend a like, couple of years maybe on that. And if you start leveraging this exploration segment, so you need to randomize a part of this traffic and the small traffic, it will take you uh, time until the collapse of the universe to collect the training data to provide a better ranking for this merchant, which is really problematic if you focus on the small and medium businesses. So, uh, and once upon a time, we had a suggestions hackathon. So we d it's, it's somehow relevant to this problem, but it's just from a different side. So we decided to improve our search suggestions from the heuristics we used with a machine learning model. Why, no? M why not? Machine learning is nice. So um, 
it's uh, the simpler domain than search. There is much less features, much less corner cases, and the cool thing of this uh, suggestions is they are mostly uh, uh, agnostic to the merchant and specific to the language you use. And we took a couple of merchants of a different scale to see how it improves on an offline test for the relevancy, and it actually improved, but the the, he, the idea here is that this merchant the on the left is m has like 100 times more traffic than the merchant on the right. And maybe that's the reason why the merchant on the right has a lower uh, value for the relevancy for the suggestions. And we had an idea, um, as our model is somehow merchant agnostic, why, why don't we take the model from this large merchant and apply it to a small merchant? And what will happen? Will it degrade or stay the same? And surprisingly, it improved. So we were like, what? How can it be? It trained on the radio details and there is a cosmetics. But it still works because it doesn't know anything about the queries. It knows only about the popularity of the queries or the number of terms in the queries, for example. So it, for some reason, somehow, somehow works and it yielded to another idea that why don't we just make a one huge generic model which can uh, use training data not on a single merchant but over the whole merchants and you will get a more training samples, which is nice. You don't need to spend time on boarding merchants and collecting click-throughs. You just need to have some data the for to compute the product popularities, but that's all, it's not years. And uh, it will yield to m covering to different weird corner cases with search, like someone searching from their uh, internet-connected fridge. Um, so and you don't need to collect the data per merchant. But there is a problem that you then need to scale the features you use in a machine learning model into the same level. So you can't use price directly because uh, $100, is it enough, a lot or not? If you're selling socks for $100 for socks is a lot. For a sofa is not a lot. So that's the problem. You need to somehow scale so they can be comparable between merchants. And um, it allowed it to build a, like a generic model that can be applied, but it's not the only uh, that not the only problem. So if you optimize for NDCG, like uh, optimize for interactions, uh, uh, you need to understand what is NDCG is, and it was explained multiple times. It's like one is good, zero is bad, and somewhere it's somewhere between this range, but it can be dramatically different depending on the data set. And how it works, it compares <laughs> the uh, true ranking that you got from the customer, like it clicked on the third result, with a perfect ranking. If you had a crystal ball, how will you rank these products knowing that this customer like completely? And uh, you need to understand what perfect ranking is and how it is computed and how can you use it to provide a better value and achieve better goals from the business perspective. So uh, you have like products A, B, C, D, you received a click on product C, so you know that most probably product C is more important than product A, B. You have no idea about product D because according to some cascade models, we, you m most probably the customer never even evaluated this product D because he was lazy to click on the product C. And um, we had an, when we enabled personalization for a couple of merchants, we got a couple of complaints about changed ranking. It was uh, uh, merchants selling some ac accessories for weed and uh, for, for one product called Stanley Bong, you know, the rank improved from the end of the list to the beginning of the list, which is weird. How can it happen? And it's like a high traffic collection, so the, it's important for them to understand what's happened, even considering that this Bong was never bought, and it costs like a lot. <laughs> And uh, we started digging into the data, but before that we tried to look at this bong and we understand actually what happened. <laughs> uh, so everyone who saw this bong on, this, on the product list, he immediately clicked on that. How, how can it be so huge? How can it be so expensive? But actually at the end you don't need this size, uh, and uh, they were at the end they were purchasing another product. But as we were uh, optimizing for clicks and for interactions, we understood that maybe not all, not all interactions are the same, so maybe you should uh, like treat purchases like with a higher weight, so the purchase of the product B is much more important than the click on the product C if you have purchases. So when you change the perfect ranking in this way, this uh, you will uh, the Stanley Bong went to the bottom position like it like it was before. But when you compute a perfect ranking, you can achieve different 
goals on the from the business perspective. So you can sort them not only by like purchase and clicks yielding to more purchases, but you can sort them, for example, by margin, and then you will optimize for the more profits at the end. Or you can optimize them, or you can sort them just randomly, so you will optimize for clicks like we did originally. So it get gives you a lot of opportunities for improvement. So, uh, and as for the results, what we did achieve at the end. So we did a lot of offline tests for NDCG as we collect this randomized uh, data for different segments and for different merchants. So if you start with a random, it's somewhere at 54, but it's very average. It can be dramatically different depending on your data set. So it's over more than 1,000 merchants. If you sort by popularity, the NDCG improves, which is nice. But if you sort still by relevancy, but the text matching, it still improves. But what if, it, if you mix popularity and relevancy, like uh, like it's um, this is the simplest and most popular solutions to m I improve the relevancy at the end, it still goes up. With our biased approach to the data, it went still up a bit, and at the end, uh, when we make made this unbiasing on the data, it went even even further. But when you started thinking about this in DCG and how can you explain to businesses business what are you doing and why you should invest in to learn to rank, you cannot just sell that say that we are going to increase in DCG to 63.5 because they sell. So what? Because they, they spoke on a different language, so we also did a couple of A-B tests <laughs> considering different uh, business metrics. So if you go, Elasticsearch is like a baseline, so if you randomize, everything drops significantly. So there is a plenty of opportunity to uh, trash your search if you make an error in some calculations. Um, so that's like at the bottom, bottom uh, threshold of trashing the search. Uh, if you go with the regression approach, like popularity and relevancy, it goes up. I have no idea why the, the CTR goes down, but the conversion goes up. It's unexplainable for me. Uh, I need to dig deeper, but I had no time. And if you go with the biggest lambda mart, it goes even up from the baseline. And at the end, it went even up. But we, we are still running a bit test on this unbiased uh, lambda mart approach. But and this is like an average temperature over the whole hospital. So for different merchants, it can provide different results. So for some, mer it depends on your search function. So once we had a merchant with zero improvement in relevancy, how hard you, not depending on the algorithm. And if you dig deeper, that there, for this merchant, the search they were selling dog food, and you exactly know what what your dog likes. Most probably, you're not choosing new dog food every week. So the search function was like a shortcut to the a special product. So usually the search queries were very precise and yielded to one or two product results, so th there is no need to rank them. If you are selling clothes, yes, it might be important because the search has a function of discovery. So it depends so it's an, on average and who knows what will be for you. Um, so as a conclusion, uh, so if you see these numbers, you might guess that, okay, so there is a correlation between NDCG and conversion, but correlation is not causation. It depends on your data, but it still somehow works. So most probably if you enable better ranking, you will get more business value on that. But there is a lot of corner cases and a lot of opportunities to trash your search and being fired when you randomized ranking, uh, just messing up with the, with the model. And when you come back to your uh, development team and tell that let's implement learn to rank right now, how much it will take, they will take your number and multiply it by something like P to get a reasonable <laughs> estimation because there is a lot of different opportunities. Yeah, so uh, that's all for today. I think we can have some questions. Thank you. So. Um, uh, you showed this uh, clicks per ranking position. So number one is far higher than number two, etc. And um, uh, we also saw this long years ago. And what we found out is actually that this is um, this is influenced um, also by the by the fact that there are multiple qu uh, that, that, that there are queries which only yield one result or only oh. a short number, a small number of results. No, not here. The 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 the, the figure. The curve I'm that went like trying, this. Trying so to find it, but yeah. So, um, so um, I, I think uh, the the other measures 
seems to be right, but the first thing here, the, the random, the, 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 the click ranks here, um, are possibly largely influenced by the fact that s oftentimes there are not so many different, um, not, 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 so, not so many articles displayed. So when we, when we looked at it with eye camera tracking, we found that uh, when you have a gallery uh, view, um, above the fold, it's almost the same for position one and the last position on the first on, on the first page above the fold. As soon as people have to scroll, th they pay less attention to the to the items ranked below the fold. But once you uh, once you have a, a gallery listing, so one, two, three, one, two, three, like this, um, the uh, the eye attention when the screen is full is about the same in our measurements for all positions on the first page, on, uh, which are displayed on the first screen. Yeah, okay. So that's not a question, it's just <laughs> a remark to that. Yes, so. Yeah, actually the behavior is a bit different on mobile because for most stores there will be only a single product displayed to you because uh, everyone likes large pictures on mobile and you need to scroll even to the second product, so it can be even worse. That's above the fold then, because you have one, only one picture above the fold. Yes, true. All right, do we have some questions left? So. Yeah, I, I keep wondering about the bong, but uh, I'll, I'll leave that in my mind. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, because I understand you're building a generic model and you're applying this model to all these different brands. Yeah. And uh, these models are built of the mappings of user interactions. Yeah. Uh, 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 are there any concerns in the climate nowadays with privacy and the use of uh, statistical data to serve other brands? If I am the brand who sells I don't know, uh, I don't know, art, and uh, well there's a strong connection, I suppose, and you're using my models to sell bonds, uh, is that something that uh, raises concerns on, on uh, customers? It's, it's a matter of consent. So it's if you talk about GDPR and privacy, if you publicly acknowledge that you are doing it, and uh, when a company signs a contract with you and they are okay with that, so you are free to use their data. But it's uh, it's ev every everything we use about the customers is already. Uh, uh, we don't store IP addresses. We no have no idea about emails. It's just some random numbers, and we don't do any cross uh, merchant tracking. So it's only uh, scoped to sp single merchants. So if customer goes to different merchants, we will never be able to understand that it's the same person. So we're trying to do our best uh, from the privacy perspective, but yes, some statistical knowledge from one merchant can be transferable, but actually it's a win-win situation for a merchant. Like, okay, you might not want to use your knowledge uh, for other merchants, but then they won't allow you to use theirs. So it's like a knowledge sharing about the customer behavior. So you just need to wait yet another year to collect uh, click-throughs. All right. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, just a general question about this 1% control group you do per merchant for the random ranking. How, how do you explain that to your customers? That I mean, obviously, there's some lost revenue. And uh, there is a trick, because major part of our merchants, uh, they are on a free plan, and they have a different type of contract with us that we can mess with their search. And as they are not paying us money, mm -hmm. <laughs> We can do whatever we want with their ranking. So, like one percent of the <laughs> traffic is randomized, cool. and it leverages the <laughs> enterprise merchant. That's how it works. So, okay. if you're not paying with your money, you're paying with your data. So that that's how it works, and we're open on that. On yeah, that. that's nice. Yeah, because you can transfer the model then from them to the yep. others. Because yeah, otherwise it would not. Cool. Thanks. All right. Other questions? There. Mike will be there in a second. Yeah, hi. Uh, I was wondering because you mentioned you have uh, different size of uh, customers, so you have basically different amounts of uh, samples from various uh, customers. So do you decrease the samples from the bigger shops to, to even out the, the bias, or how do you handle it with the generic model? Actually, yes, with sample, but not like, uh, so I just, we just chop, uh, limit the samples from some very high traffic merchants. So like we have a couple of merchants, like the top traffic merchants is doing like 10% of all the traffic on our platform. So you need to downsample that so you can more diverse data set. 
But in general, if you go with a different approaches to unbiasing the data, it's like also be a bias in the data, but it's not a position bias, but a merchant bias. So you also can sample it not only by the merchant basis, but like on the position. So you sample your click-throughs based on the uh, click positions, for example, or with some other model to Im Im better improve your results. But currently we're doing very simple sampling, like just downsampling the, the, the high traffic merchants. Yeah. All right, we have another question. Do we have another question? It doesn't look like that. Thanks a lot for entertaining an informative session.